Would you like some inspiration on how to use images on your cards? Today I have four different projects to share with you. Hi there, it's Therese from Lost in Paper and I'm so excited. Spellbinders had sent me this set of stamps designed by Jane Davenport to share with you today and they're clear stamps and uh, the main style of them are images of women and also there's some mermaid images in there as well. So I've created two different styles of cards and I'm going to give you two examples of each today. So we better get started. There is lots to do. I've got the beautiful dreamer. This is the image that looks like a ballerina and I want to repeat stamp her on the front of my card. Now I do like to work on a separate piece of cardstock. It's cut to the same size as the front of my card because I'm going to be doing some Copic colouring and I don't like to see the bleed through but you could certainly work directly on your card front if you prefer. So I've stamped my girl once and I'm leaving the stamp in place while I'm doing my colouring. I'm going to quickly whip through the colouring here. Most of the colours you can see off to the side. I'm not doing anything complicated because the image style is quite sketchy and I think that really lends itself towards some loose colouring and she would certainly look amazing painted with some watercolours I think with that sort of washy look as well and I could even see this design card without any colouring at all and even stamping the girl image in a single colour like even in a pink and or a grey and I think that would look lovely as well. I decided to go for pink. Colouring in pink, not stamping in pink. <laughs> and I'm just adding a few final touches of shading with my BV20, which I think works really well. So now what I'm doing is re-stamping her and I'm using just a pigment black ink to do that. And that just um, makes those outlines I really pop and I have created a mask now I did do a practice piece of this so that's why this mask has already been used before but you could certainly reuse a mask you can keep it if you like I don't tend to keep them in between projects I just tend to recreate them when I need them because it doesn't take that long to do and this is where the misty comes into its own to do the repeated stamping all I need to do is shift my cardstock along. I don't need to actually worry about the height of the girl because I wanted it to look like it was the same height along. So by just shifting it along the top of the card, I could easily stamp her twice more and know that it's going to work out perfectly even with the image I'd already done. I added the sentiment from the set as well and then like I said I am going to add this to the front of my card. This one's a side fold landscape card and I did also stamp her skirt which comes in the same set and colour that and I decided to add a little bit of glitter because we all need a bit of glitter in our life. If you have a glitter phobia look away. <laughs> And I did pop that skirt up on the middle girl. You could leave it the way it was. I just thought the skirt added a little something something to the card design. And we're heading on to the second card now. This is another sort of a similar sketchy image. And this is probably the most clean and simple card of today's examples. And all I'm doing is stamping her with a Copic Friendly ink. I'm doing the same thing. I'm on, working on some Nina 80 pound cardstock because I really like the way that my Copics blend on this cardstock. And I'm doing some really simple colouring this time. I am keeping it looking a little bit sketchy. I haven't drawn on too many different colours. I've used a lot of the colours that I had on the previous image. And this would be a great card if you needed a card in a hurry. And I think it would particularly be good for like a teenage girl card and oh speaking of teenage girls <laughs> it's my Lily now she likes to help sometimes if we call it help <laughs> so 
I have got a sentiment set here which is from the Fun Stampers Journey Letterboard Minis set and this is a really versatile set because it's got a nice basic font and some really good sentiments in it and you can mix it up with other stamps or dies that you may already have as well so I decided to do it in a two piece I did heat and boss portion of the sentiment on some grey card stock and then just stamp the other directly on the card front well it's not the card front yet but it will be now this girl I forgot to mention that she's from a set called Fluent Fantastic and I think she's beautiful so now I'm going to switch it up a notch and I'm going to make two mermaid cards starting with the glorious mermaid I have decided to create a blend of backgrounds and I'm using my distress oxide inks and just with the normal blending tool here and I've just chosen some beautiful mermaid colors in the distress oxide inks uh, picked raspberry cracked pistachio and wilted violet I'm splashing on a little bit of water here and then picking up that color with some paper towel just to add some interest to my background and then I'm just going to stamp the mermaid image this is the glorious mermaid and I decided to color directly on to the background and this is something I think adds uh, a lot of interest to a design and you can sort of see the background coming through the pencils and this works really well on design paper as well if you've got a, a beautiful design paper that either wasn't too busy or too heavily designed this works really well and is a great fun technique to do I did start by laying down a bit of a base color of white pencil these are my Prismacolor pencils and that just allows the color that I'm adding on top to be more true you don't have to do this it also I think it helps to add a bit of a highlight to the image and I'm really happy with how this image colored up on this design on this background design I think she just looks beautiful I'm not pressing very hard on my pencils which is one of the tricks when you're using these wax based pencils once you sort of fill the tooth of the paper it does become really difficult to add more color so the lighter you press the more layers you can add and the more realistic I suppose as realistic as a mermaid can be <laughs> so what I'm doing here is using one of my hem stitch rectangles to die cut a rectangle around and through the girl I'm going to be using both of these pieces on my card front and just pop up the center on some foam I have added some white splatters here and I do like to protect portions of my image the sentiment comes from a set which is called Queen of Everything and that's exactly what it says and then all I had to do was add a few droplet gemstones and I think these work really well with my underwater splashy scene and that's just so you can see how I popped up the inside layer of the card there so my second image comes from a set called Singing Mermaids there's two different images in this set and they're both really sweet I created the same kind of background with my Distress Oxide inks and now I'm stamping the image directly onto my card front so this is a top fold portrait style card and I'm using some pigment black ink yet again and then this time I'm using one of the smaller I'm re-stamping it sorry on the panel that I created and then I'm using one of the smaller hem stitch rectangles to die cut a portion of the image out and then I'm going to color this portion only because I'm not going to use the outside image I did consider doing it exactly the same as the other one but I just thought it'd be fun to have something a little bit different you could easily add that um, border image around and do it exactly like the other one was but I wanted this one just to change it up a little bit to give you another idea which is similar but different I did the same style of coloring I didn't really 
try and add different colors I just kept to uh, the same color theme throughout these two cards which made it really simple to do I protected the girls faces while I did some splatters of white ink and you know why we have to protect their faces because you know it's going to end up in the totally wrong spot <laughs> and I used another sentiment from the mini uh, the letterboard minis set and white heat emboss set on some black cardstock and then all that's left to do is to pop the image up on the front of the card so that it matches the image that I stamped on the card front and I didn't color the image on the card front I just left that as black and white and then I popped up the sentiment and I also added a few of the clear droplet gemstones a big thank you to Spellbinders for sending me these wonderful products so that I could share them with you and give you some ideas on how to use image stamps on your cards. These are such beautiful images and Jane Davenport has really knocked this one out of the ballpark. So thanks for joining me. If you did like this video, please click on the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel. I appreciate every visit that you make here. Till next time. Happy paper crafting. Bye.